Hello, I am Antonis Papasava, a PhD student at UCL, and today I'm going to present our work on QAnon on Vote. So let's quickly see the origins and history of QAnon. QAnon is a conspiracy theory that originates from posts by an anonymous user with the nickname Q. On October 28, 2017, Q posted a thread titled Calm Before the Storm on Fortune's Politically Incorrect Board, claiming to be a government insider with Q-level security clearance. Q claimed to have read documents related to the struggle over power involving Donald Trump and Robert Mueller, the so-called Deep State, and Hillary Clinton's pedophile ring. Allegedly, the Deep State is a secret network of powerful and influential people that control policy and governments around the world. Q also claims to be a combatant in Donald Trump's crusade against the Deep State and continued dropping cryptic posts on Fortune and Aitkun, giving birth to a community named after his trip code, QAnon. The community tries to decode these cryptic messages to figure out the truth about the evil intentions of the deep state and the noble multi-front war that Donald Trump is waging. Note that QAnon is broadly defined as a super conspiracy theory, as it combines many conspiracy theories together like Pizzagate, Bill Gates creating COVID, 5G spreading COVID, and so on. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what QAnon is, let's quickly see why we should study it. QAnon followers grew a lot over the last few years via mainstream and alternative social networks. For example, QAnon adherents around the world, not only in the US, have staged protests for their beliefs. Conspiracy theories like QAnon are extremely dangerous for democracies, especially when government officials and media get involved in starting or promoting them to benefit their political agendas and interests. For instance, during the US congressional elections, about 25 candidates that expressed their support for the conspiracy appeared on ballots. From those, two elected House representatives publicly endorsed the QAnon movement. So QAnon is no longer an online chatter in fringe communities as we have QAnon supporters in US Congress. These events can weaponize the conspiracy and cause real life violence as the world witnessed on January 6th when a pro-Trump mob stormed the US Capitol in a failed attempt to overturn his defeat in the US presidential elections 2020. Last, mainstream social networks banned QAnon discussions from their platforms, with Reddit being the first to do so in 2018. It was later reported that the subscribers of the banned subreddits migrated to vote. So what is VOTE? VOTE is a news aggregator launched in April 2014. Areas of interest called subverses group posts on VOTE. Submissions on VOTE look identical to the ones in Reddit. Users can create a submission by posting a title or a link. Others can then comment, upvote, and downvote that submission and the comments of others. Note that new users are not allowed to post a new submission unless their comments collect a net of 10 upvotes. This is called the comment contribution point. Each subverse has a limit of 500 active submissions at a time, distributed over 20 pages. When a new submission is created, the one at the end of page 20 disappears. The disappeared submission is still reachable though, but only if one knows its direct link. It is archived and therefore new comments cannot be posted to it. Vote was shut down on December 25th last year after the founder posted on the platform that he cannot keep up anymore. Given the violent history of the movement and knowing that many radicalized followers joined VOTE, we formulate the following research questions to characterize the conspiracy within VOTE. We first investigate the activity of the movement on VOTE. Then we detect the words and discussion topics that best describe the QAnon movement and what narratives are shared and discussed by QAnon followers. Last, we see at how toxic is the content posted on VOTE subverses. Our dataset consists of the most active QAnon-focused subverse, Great Awakening. We also collect data from the most active subverses as a baseline dataset. This includes the top four in terms of posts from the top 10 most subscribed subverses. We started our crawler on May 28, 2020, and we stopped on October 10th of the same year. Here we show the activity of these subverses based on the number of submissions and comments posted per day. Great Awakening has the most submissions with about 100 new submissions per day on average. The next most active subverse is news with about 70 submissions per day. Note that Great Awakening only has 20,000 subscribers, while News has 100,000. Posting activity on Great Awakening peaks on the 2nd of July, and a manual inspection of our dataset showed that this may be related to Epstein's ex-girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, being arrested by the FBI. 
Last, the 7th of October has the most submissions on Great Awakening, which we believe is due to Facebook announcing the ban of QAnon discussions across all their platforms. Next, we focus on user activity to understand how often users post new submissions. We do this to understand whether the audience of Great Awakening and baseline services consume information from specific users due to votes rule not allowing newcomers to post new submissions unless they have a comment contribution point above 10. Here, we show the top 15 submitters and commenters of both communities and change the usernames to protect the privacy of the users. The 14,000 submissions on Great Awakening were made by only 346 users, while on the other hand, the 22,000 submissions of the baseline services were made by almost 2,000 users. The top submitter, user 1, posted almost 23% of the total submissions on Great Awakening while the remaining submitters created only 28%. Overall, the audience of Great Awakening seems to be consuming content from a handful of users and to a great extent from user one. This is not the case for the submissions of the baseline dataset though. The top 15 submitters together are only responsible for about 27% of the total submissions. Comment activity seems to be even more distributed across users. Excluding the top 15 commenters, all others posted almost 81% of the comments in Great Awakening and 92% in Baseline Subverses. Also, about 3,000 usernames overlap between the Great Awakening and the Baseline Subverses. Specifically, user 8 and user 9 are amongst the top submitters in both communities, and user 30 ranks first commenter in both communities. Next, we look at when these users registered the new account or vote, and we plot the number of registrations per month for both Great Awakening and the baseline subverses. 18% of the users in our dataset registered on vote in December 2018. That was the month Reddit banned many QAnon-related subreddits. We also observe a peak in both communities between June and July 2015, probably due to Reddit banning many hate-focused subreddits. The next peak is in October 2019, when Reddit banned the most popular incel subreddit. Overall, although our dataset is not representative of votes user base, it provides an indication of the dates users decided to join the platform. We confirmed that vote received a high volume of new user registrations close to the periods of Reddit banning hateful and QAnon related subreddits. For our second research question, we employ LDA topic modeling. We note that we detect popular bigrams in our corpus and include them in our bag of words too. For Great Awakening, users tend to discuss the US presidential elections as suggested by words like Trump, election, Biden, and vote across many topics. Users also refer to mail ballot and voter fraud, along with posts from POTUS about CNN fake news. There are also discussions about COVID-19 pandemic like wear mask, lockdown, and big pharma. We also find the topic about the Black Lives Matter movement based on words like black life, black, and life matter. As for the baseline services, we once again find topics including elections, coronavirus, and Black Lives Matter, but with more frequent use of hateful and controversial words. While topic modeling gives us an idea of what is being discussed, we are also interested of who is being discussed. So we detect the most popular named entities mentioned in our dataset. The 10 most popular named entities in Great Awakening include Trump, US, Biden, America, China, and the FBI. While for the baseline subverses, some of the top named entities are Jews, Trump, US, America, Jewish, and Jew. Overall, the discussions in both communities are related to US happenings, politics, and established organizations and institutions, with the baseline subverses focusing mostly on nationalities and religious or political groups, while Great Awakening discussions focus on the US and President Donald Trump. To detect the narratives that are shared and discussed by QAnon followers, we use word to vec To better understand the links between the different words in our vector space, we use graph representations for better visualization. In other words, we transform the embeddings into a graph where nodes are words and the edges are weighted by the cosine similarity between the learned vectors of the nodes that the edge connects. We perform community detection on the resulting graph to understand the high-level topics that groups of words form. This is the two-hop ego network graph starting from the term QAnon. The QAnon community of words seems to be discussing the psychological operations and disinformation that the government or the evil cabal allegedly coordinates to manipulate people. 
The green community is discussing the conspiracy itself based on words like QAnons, believers, movement, and so on. In the purple community, we come across the divisor of the conspiracy, Q. Here, the discussion revolves around the research the community does to decode the cryptic cramps or drops that Q posts along with the timing and the timeline of these posts. In the yellow community, we come across the predecessor of QAnon, Pizzagate, Q drop aggregators like QMap and other social media platforms like 8kun, 4chan, Twitter, Parler, and Instagram. We plot the same graph, but this time starting from Q. Interestingly, the community of Q has terms like LARP, which stands for live action role playing, doubts, and chill, a term to describe someone that might be hired by the government pretending to be a conspiracy follower. On the other hand, we find terms like followers and AG, a term used to describe the perfect man. This might mean that although the community is devoted to the QAnon movement, at the same time, there might be signs of chasm with regards to what the users on Great Awakening on Vote think of Q. Last, we detect how toxic the conversations in our data set are using Google's Perspective API. The baseline subverses exhibit higher levels of toxicity and severe toxicity compared to Great Awakening. Specifically, about 40% of the posts of the baseline subverses have toxicity score greater than 0.5, while for Great Awakening, that amounts only to 23.3%. We observe similar trends for the other models, with the baseline subverses having at least 10% most posts receiving score 0.5 and higher compared to Great Awakening. This is an indication that Great Awakening is focused on the conspiracy aspects of world events and Donald Trump, while racist or hateful agendas might characterize vote as a whole, or at least the popular general discussion subverses in our dataset. Interestingly, the level of toxicity in the baseline subverses appear to be similar to 4chan's poll. Considering that poll is known to be a highly toxic place, full of controversial content, we present evidence that votes most active general discussion subverses are as toxic as 4chan poll. To summarize, this work presents the first characterization of the QAnon movement on vote. We presented the engagement of users, which was rising over the data collection period across both communities, and found that the audience of Great Awakening consumes content from a handful of users. Also, registrations picked when Reddit banned hateful or conspiracy-related subreddits. Last, using topic modeling techniques, we show that conversations focused on world events, US politics, and Donald Trump. And finally, we provide evidence that general discussions on vote are as toxic as the ones of Fortune's politically incorrect board. While this paper focused on vote, QAnon discussions exist in many platforms. We are currently working on a follow-up study that examines QAnon from a cross-platform perspective. We also investigate the possibility of studies that cover a much longer period than the one presented here to show how the movement has evolved. Finally, there are real indications that the movement exhibits cult-like characteristics based on recovery stories from former adherents and emotional support communities for people whose loved ones have become followers. Understanding more about the QAnon counter movement might provide insights into the real world impact of dangerous conspiracy theories, as well as devising mitigation strategies. Thank you very much for your time.